Hello, Carl. Welcome to the Water Cube. Do you, would you mind introducing yourself and showing us your name tag as yep. well? I'm Jay Carl Ganter. I'm director and co-founder of Circle of Blue. And Circle of Blue is the world's leading news, science, and data organization reporting from the front lines of the global freshwater crisis. Great. And uh, what has brought you to World Water Week? This is not your first time here. You are not a newcomer. This is my third time yeah. at, at World Water Week, so I'm here wearing several different hats. Mm -hmm. One is to look for new stories. Um, this is where the experts gather mm -hmm. from around the world to share and to you know, compare notes and to look for trends. And so that's one thing I'm doing here. I'm, I'm wearing the hat of a journalist. I'm looking for what are the big stories emerging. And some of the big stories, probably the biggest story emerging in water today, and we're seeing more and more of it through World Water Week and other convenings, is this, this thing, this concept called the nexus. Now, what is a nexus? It's yeah, a coming together, it's a that. collision, it's a, it's a merging, and that's the nexus of water, food, energy, and climate. So those four things are really conspiring to put major, major pressures on the world's resources and the world's economies. And so what do I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of water to extract fossil fuels and process them. It takes a lot of water to run turbines in dams. It takes a lot of energy to move, treat, and deliver fresh, safe drinking water. So there's a nexus there. There's a direct relationship, a push-pull between water and energy. Of course, food is, is very, very common sense because it takes a lot of water to irrigate for food. So when you have, when you irrigate food, you're using energy. When you're using energy, you're using more water. So there is this constant, constant cycle and push-pull between water, food, and energy. And when you would add climate on top of that, then you have mm -hmm. other events. So you have more drought, you yeah. have more floods, you have a redistribution of, of fresh water. And so that whole calculation, that whole nexus kind of, kind of machine starts to shift and how it shifts. And so that's one of the big questions here at World Water Week and throughout the whole global water community is how climate change is going to shift this. Yeah. And if I were to make one big one prediction, I think that the term water security is going to become much, much more popular in the policy yeah. and even with the public. And so when we talk about water security, we always have to be talking about it as a nexus issue with those four key points. That's very interesting. Thank you for telling us about that. And uh, Carl, you work for Circle of Blue, but you also have something else here to tell us about um, that, you, that you head up. Yeah, so at Circle of Blue, we like to take a look. We, we do daily coverage, uh, we do trend spotting, we send world leading photojournalists and writers into the field to spend, do long term projects and really dig up new important data imagery, make it personal, make big issues personal. Yeah. So, our latest project is called Choke Point China. And here's, Great. Here's the yeah. postcard. So Choke Point China is exactly is is exactly that. It's a it's a look at the challenge between water and energy mm -hmm. in the world's fastest growing economy. So yeah. right now we have a major struggle, a major struggle between these two resources that's unfolding before our eyes. Mm -hmm. And we feel that it is probably the greatest impediment to China's continued growth. The greatest impediment wow. to China's GDP is a lack of fresh water where they need it, both of course for their population, but the secret is a lack of water where they need it to mine and process coal. So when you have an economy that runs 70% of its energy is generated by coal, that 70% needs a lot of water yeah. to extract, process, and deliver coal, not to mention to cool the plants, the coal-fired power plants. So when you step back from that energy use, there's a huge, huge water footprint behind that. And when the water's in the south and the coal is in the north, what do you do? Yeah. You have yourself a choke point. And so yeah. China has massive projects of conservation, of water transport, etc., to really respond to this. But the big question is, well, one is, will they respond in time? And because they are responding actually very, very intensely, and then uh, what can we learn from how they respond? Do you have a, a new suggestion or a new um, idea for China to respond to this? Well, I think the most important thing we learn is how China is responding to this. Is you know they go there there are two paths. When China need, wants to do something, they do it. 
in the United States, what we can learn from China is, one, China realizes, is realizing more and more that there's a problem. What China needs to do is break down their silos within their ministries and, and their, you know, their communities so that when they're talking about water, they're also talking about energy and they're also talking about food. It's just like it's the common language that that's what water security means. It means that nexus rather than just individual water. What we need to learn from China in the United States is we need to look at, we need to get an energy policy that takes into account water. We need a water policy that takes into account energy and the same thing. So China's starting to take a systemic look in the U.S., as far as we can tell, is just in stasis. It's good to be able to learn from each other, and that's why we're here at World Water Week, to meet people and to hear their ideas. And thank you for your time, Carl, and for sharing with us. It's great to be in the Cube. Great.